Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Before we proceed on our discussion for today, let's have first our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God in heaven, we are here before thee. Help us to study well. Help us to be obedient and honest. Help us to love one another. Bless our teacher, bless our school, bless our country, and bring us all to heaven. Amen. This is we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So, good afternoon once again, my dear students. Last time, okay, we have our discussion about romantic period music okay so this is where we tackle um all of the informations about romantic period music okay the character pieces of chopin okay we also discuss it there when we talk about the character pieces these are the compositions of chopin that they have for example okay or such as we have nocturnes impromptu ballads etudes preludes curzo and many other character pieces no okay so today i will just um discuss the remaining topic which is the composers of the romantic period so uh, you might observe that i will keep looking at this way it is because of uh, my camera in the pc is on this side and my screen is on the other side so please bear with me my dear students okay so now let's begin with our topic but before that hello once again are you there okay are you ready to listen now let's proceed okay so i have here some questions that i want you to take note okay when we talk about the um, composers of the romantic period for you okay since they are the composer okay they are the one who's writing music okay not only music but also the lyrics itself that's why they are called composer so for you what is instrumental music next one when do we say that one's music is well composed then the last one why do we need to compose music so all of these questions are just opinion based questions so whatever your answers it is all accepted okay so these are also okay included with our topic for today let's begin with the composers that we have okay so do you know who is in the picture i know that you are familiar with him already since last time you met him already correct okay so you met him last discussion and he is a well-known pianist during the romantic period he is also known as the poet of the piano so who is he he is none other than frederick francois chopin or you may call frederick francois chopin okay so just to clear with a surname it is pronounced as chopin please take note of that okay so who is this composer we all know from our last discussion that he dominated the romantic period correct okay so frederick francois chopin started composing at the age of six and he gave his first public concerto performance at the age of eight okay so that is frederick franco chopin so that is how he started in music no okay so aside from that okay so chopin is a uh, french composer or a polish french composer and virtuoso when we say virtuoso it means expert in playing a piano so he is a virtuoso pianist okay so he is also considered as one of the great masters of the romantic music okay so aside from that he is best known for his piano solo pieces and 
concerti. So why did he uh, became popular? It is because his melodies are song-like and long. Okay, so aside from that, let's have some few um, backstep on where he came from. Okay, so he was born in Poland, west of Warsaw. Okay, so Chopin displayed his uh, musical gift uh, since childhood. As I mentioned a while ago, he started at the age of six. No? Okay, so aside from that, he created finest, uh, finest body of solo music for the piano. And it is uh, notable that many of his works remained popular in the pianist repertory or repertoire. Okay, aside from that, aside from being a pianist, he is also a melodist. Okay, just like what I've mentioned a while ago, um, he became a melodist because his melodies are song-like and long. Okay, so he usually um, repeats his melody with slightly embellishment. What is the meaning of embellishment? Those students, um, the music of Chopin kept on repeating and repeating. You will not get tired of playing it or uh, you will not get uninterested or boring. You will not find it boring because of the embellishment he created. So what is embellishment means? It is, um, it is the synonym of enhancement beautification okay so he is though it is still the same notes that he is playing but he is adding something okay it's like he is adding some spices on uh, if it is about cooking no okay so he is adding some spice and spices on it to make it more delicious to make it just like in music to make it more um, beautiful and satisfying to our ears okay so that is one of his characteristics when it comes to music okay so aside from that one characteristics that he has is the application of rubato okay so when we talk about rubato Okay, so it is a rhythmic pattern or flexibility of a relaxation of uh, strict time. So, it is um, the opposite to the characteristic of the classical period composers who preferred steady tempo and performing their compositions. Because students, so when we have our uh, musical piece, just like what I've always mentioned to you, whatever is written on that particular composer, uh, composition rather, it is what they are, um, they are instructed to follow. Okay, so the classical composers really love to use steady tempo. Okay, so they are into using steady tempo, but ever the beginning, if it is, uh, if it began with a mellow uh, sound or it is in, uh, uh, what they call that, um, largo, okay, or presto, which means fast, then all throughout the composition, it will remain like that, okay? But for Chopin, it is different, okay? So, I hope that it is still clear with all of you. Okay, next one that we have is that Chopin wrote varied forms of piano. Okay, that is the piano pieces. And one example that we have here is the Nocturne. I know you are already familiar with the composition Nocturne. Okay, so that is the life of Frederick Francois Chopin. Okay, so last time you already have knowledge about him since we... Uh, talk about him there are informations that we mentioned already about him no last meeting next we are going to proceed with this composer so who is this composer so he is none other than peter Ilyich tchaikovsky okay. peter Ilyich tchaikovsky so who is peter Ilyich tchaikovsky so he is one of the famous russian composer okay and aside from that he displayed exceptional musical gift okay on which he started improvising um piano and composing his first 
song at the age of four only. So he started really, really young. So Peter and his sibling received their education from their French governess. Aside from that, his father took him occasionally to concert and because of that uh, early uh, because of that early exposure in music uh, he noticed that the music he heard from concert always gets stuck in his head okay so that is the um, one uh, important uh, or uh, one most significant thing that happened to Peter Illich Tchaikovsky wherein he heard all those it's something like the word LSS or the last song syndrome my dear students wherein the song that you have heard already for a minute or an hour it kept on singing in your head or it was stuck in your head so that is what happened to Tchaikovsky na. okay aside from that Okay, he uh, took music lessons while attending law school in St. Petersburg, Russia. So he is really um, studying law. But he uh, took music just for hobby before. Okay, after that, at the age of 19, he graduated and worked as bureau clerk. And he worked hard, but... He preferred still, he preferred music as his profession. Okay, so that is uh, Peter Illich Tchaikovsky. So, uh, if we have different character pieces for Chopin here, some of the composition of Tchaikovsky that we have, he includes concertos, ballets, symphonies, operas, and even chamber music okay so now we will listen to one of his composition okay one from the given okay so please wait okay so now we are going to watch swan lake by tchaikovsky this is a ballet okay and the one that we will be watching is the final scene because there are um different scene in this stage performance now so the one that we will be using or we will be watching is the last or the final scene aside from swan lake there are still lots of composition that tchaikovsky created just like um the dance of the reed flutes from the nutcrackers if you are familiar on that i think maybe you will be thinking about the bo the barbie and the nutcracker no and aside from that is the 1812 overture which is about romeo and juliet okay so this one it is swan lake okay now let's see
as a swan lake. As you can observe, it's a ballet. No? Okay, so I will be stop presenting this one. Okay, so uh, that is one of the composition of Tchaikovsky. So today we are about to proceed with the next one. Okay, with the next composer that we have. So okay, so the next composer that we have here is none other than Franz Liszt. Maybe you find him um, familiar with you because of piano tiles. No. So what is or where? the Franz Liszt came from okay so this is just an information about Franz Liszt so he became a concert pianist and he was also accepted as court conductor in Weimar but before that who is Franz Liszt so Franz Liszt is one of the most significant composers of the romantic era so he was born in Hungary of an Austrian mother which uh, he received most of his education in Paris. So at an early age, he was taken to Vienna to study piano. So Liszt um, received his piano lessons from Carl Cherny, if you are familiar with that, who is uh, um, in his own youth, had been a student of Beethoven and Hummel. Okay, so aside from that, he also took lessons in composition under the tutelage of Antonio Salieri. Do you still remember Antonio Salieri? The one who's really jealous about the talent and skills of Mozart? Yes, he's the one, Antonio Salieri. So he became uh, the teacher. He became a teacher of Franz Liszt. So aside from that, okay, so Salieri is also a former music director of the Viennese court, right? Uh, because um, there's a particular excerpt that I want or uh, I allow you to watch wherein um, there is a king and Salieri is there. Who created also a composition for the king right okay so because of uh, Franz Liszt let's move on to Franz Liszt once again because of this musical experiences that he has he became a concert pianist okay so that is the reason why he became a concert pianist that is because of his experiences in life okay so we all know students that what we uh, approve, especially if you are about to take a job, you are to uh, have your job already. Experience is really one of the best thing that you should acquire or you should have. No, okay. So eventually, okay. So he became a concert pianist. No, and then eventually he was accepted as court conductor in Weimar. Okay. Aside from that, he um. He taught, wrote, conducted, and played piano at Weimar for several years. But at the end, he gave up his position. Why? What do you think is the reason? Okay, because he was in love with the married women. Downheartedly, to the point that he turned to church to took minor religious order excuse me while he was living in rome okay so uh, he spent his time uh, most of his life rather in germany austria and hungary so uh, there he composed uh, orchestral and piano music as well as uh, masses oratorios um songs and organ music so it is because of uh, he it took a while that he stayed at church so that is the reason why he um composed there oratorios masses so those are um compositions for church no some of uh, least composition that uh, i know is uh, the Hungarian Rhapsody. Aside from that, we still have the Libestrom. Okay, so um, today we are going to listen with the Libestrom, which is that as um, one of the famous composition of Franz Liszt. Okay, so now let's listen to it. 
Ayan, okay. So now, let's listen to Libestrum number 3, which is entitled Love, Dream of Franz Liszt. Franz Liszt, which entitled as Love Dream. No? Okay, so in Russia, Liszt meets the beautiful princess named Caroline. So they fall in love and she soon left or leave her husband for Franz Liszt. Then she became a muse and inspiration for Liszt and his last and strongest love. So, uh, this uh, composition was inspired by his love for Caroline. Liszt creates a um, beautiful, most beautiful romantic piano composition. And this composition, Livestrum, is also known as a Dream of Love, is dedicated to her, to Caroline. And the piece becomes a classic hit. But the church doesn't allow Liz to marry Caroline because she could not terminate her first marriage. So the unmarried couple moves to the city of Weimar, where Liz becomes the music director for the Royal Orchestra. And this becomes the most, um, what do you call that? This becomes the most productive and happy period in, li uh, in the life of Liszt. No? And the brilliant pianist and composer Franz Liszt became a, super uh, a superstar because of that. 
Okay, so, and uh, the brilliant pianist and composer Franz Liszt becomes a really superstar. So he tours many countries and makes people happy with his music and uh, even his love life. Uh, no? Okay, so after that, okay, since uh, Caroline, let's go back with their... Uh, um, love story since Caroline cannot terminate her marriage while her husband is alive her relatives are also against to Franz Liszt so uh, because of that she and Franz Liszt remained unmarried and after that okay I think um, as uh, years later or years goes by Okay, Liszt suffers from emotional pain until the end of his life. Being loved by public, Liszt is never really happy in his personal life. So he expresses himself making beautiful music. So that is the life of Franz Liszt. Okay, so how sad, right? Okay, so though he uh, make other people happy, but... Uh, him himself is not that happy talaga okay so there are times that even us people we uh, we show to the other people that we are happy we made them smile we made them laugh but the real inside us we are not okay so that is also similar or relatable with the life of Franz Liszt. Okay, so now we are going to proceed with the last composer that we have here, which is Camille Saint Saens or Saint Sons. Okay, so that is the real pronunciation of his name. So who is Camille Saint Sons? Okay, so he was a French composer of the 19th century so he is the one who wrote all genre including sacred choral music opera concertos even symphonies solo piano chamber music and songs okay so he really he are he is really into music come to think of it if you are not into music how come you created all genre of music no okay so he began playing piano lessons with his aunt okay when he was uh, around two years old it's really really young no? so maybe he can just barely uh, um, talk or maybe he's not yet ready to talk during that time maybe the word that he can say is mama or some papa something like that no okay because he's just two years old and it was his aunt who taught him how to play piano okay and also they did composing okay so his first work was done at the age of three Okay, imagine it's really a mysterious composer, right? Uh, okay, so he studied composition with Pierre Maladin at the age of seven. And when he was 10, he played piano in a concert. So the works of famous composers. So he played it at the age of um, 10. Now, so what are uh, the examples of... Uh, the compositions he played when he was 10. So, one example is that Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 3 in C minor. Aside from that, Mozart Piano Concerto Number no. 15 in B flat major. Okay, and some works of Bach, Handel, and even Hummel. Okay, so he entered the Paris Conservatory of Music and studied organ and composition in. 1848 okay so after studying he was appointed to france's most prominent organ post so this is the most important post uh, or most significant post that they have okay so that of uh, the madeleine in paris after that okay he remained there for almost two decades and in the place uh, he developed his legendary gift 
for improvisation. And after that, in 1875, he married the 19-year-old Marie Churfot. And it ushered in the saddest chapter in his life where the dark period produced some of his most popular works, including Dance Macabre in 1875 and Samson et Delilah okay as 1878 okay so if you are going to think about it so he is 1835 he was born at the year 1835 no and if you will be thinking 18 no 35 to 1875. If you are to count it, let's uh, do the math. Okay, let's try to uh, compute what age do you think he was? Okay, when uh, he met his wife. Okay, so 18. We have 1835 na, and we have to subtract it to 1848. 1848. So let's see. Okay, so the age gap that they have is 13 years, but we all know that love is not about age. Okay, so that is Camille Saint 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 Sons. Okay, so one of his composition that we will listen today is the Dance Macabre. Okay, here it is. Okay, okay. So now we are going to listen to this particular composition of Camille Saint Saint. Ah, uh, Saint Saint. No, it's Camille Saint Sons. Okay, so this is entitled as Dance Macabre, or the meaning of that is Dance of Death. Okay, so just to give you some information about that, Dance of Death is also called as Dance Macabre, which is a medieval allegorical concept of all conquering and equalizing power of death. So it was expressed in uh, the drama, in uh, poetry, and music, and as well as the visual arts of Western Europe. Okay, so let's listen to this one. From the term "dance macabre," it just feels like something like "abracadabra" of the witches, na. So kindly listen to the music. So it is uh, strictly speaking, it is a literary or pictorial representation of the procession or dance of both living and death figures. Okay, so the living arrange in order of their rank from pope and emperor to child, clerk and hermit and the dead. Leading them to the grave. Okay, so that is uh, um, dance macabre all about. So aside from that, okay, so uh, it is uh, 
really really something no so you can listen to the sound So they are saying kasi na it's not always easy to learn how to accept death. So by understanding um, the rich history and tradition of dance macabre, it's easy to how uh, people in years past made the most of their limited time they had, okay? Actually, this dance macabre, I think it was originated from 13th to 14th century. If I'm not mistaken, from the medieval period, it was already happening. And then Camille saint Sons created a music about it. Okay, so I will stop. Okay. I will stop presenting this one. Okay, so that is our discussion for today. We tackled four composers of the Romantic period. We have Frederick Francois Chopin. Next is we have Peter Illich Tchaikovsky and then Franz Liszt. And then the last one is Camille Saint-Saëns, okay? And if you're going to think one composition of these composers, we have from Chopin, the Nocturne in E-flat major, right? And then for Tchaikovsky, you can just choose whether Swan Lake or uh, even the Reed, okay, of the Nutcrackers. It's still fine. And then for Camille Saint Sons, we have the Dance Macabre. Okay, so that is our discussion for today. And good luck with your quiz. Thank you so much for listening and have a nice day ahead. Bye bye.